Dear students, today's topic is going to be on population growth. So we're going to look at this both from an ecological perspective and also from a human population growth perspective as well. So let's begin by going over the history of human population growth. So by the 1800s, we had 1 billion people and it had taken us about 200,000 years from the very beginning of our species to 1800 to reach that 1 billion mark. However, if you look at the population graph then, by 2000, year 2000, we had reached 7 billion people. So we grew at a very, very high rate. It took us 200 years from 1800 to reach that 7 billion mark. And why was that possible? Well, we had increased our life expectancy so people could then reproduce for longer because they lived for longer, and we also decreased infant mortality or the rate at which infants are not living past the age of two. And we can thank these improved life expectancies and decreased infant mortality to the Industrial Revolution where we were able to create more material and agricultural goods that could prolong our lifespan and decrease the death rate of young infants. You can see that we are projected to peak um, at 11 billion in the year 2100 and from there we would see a decline in the human population. But this is overall just one picture of the history of the growth of our human population on Earth. You can see that much of that graph, especially from the year 1800 to 2000, modeled what we call exponential growth. An exponential growth is when a population has a growth rate without any resource limitations. So it's increasing exponentially. You can almost think of this as doubling. So bacteria also display exponential growth rate where their population will continue to double from two to four, to 8, to 16, to 32, to 64, as you can see here. It is not growing at a constant linear rate, it just continues to grow exponentially. Another characteristic of exponential growth is a higher number of births compared to the number of deaths. Also in exponential growth, we can predict a population's doubling time. So that's how we were able to predict that 11 billion peak. Organisms that also rely on exponential growth are known as our strategists. So let's take a look at some of their reproductive strategies and resource allocation. So here are some examples. You have oysters, which can produce about 500 million spawn a year. You have tuna, which can produce about 6,000 progeny in a year, frogs at 200, and rabbits, which are considered a mammalian R strategist at 12 offspring a year. So one characteristic of these R strategists is they have a small size, they have a short life expectancy, so I kind of call them the YOLO strategists, where they live fast and they die young, so they're going to reproduce very quickly in that time period. So again, they have very high birth rates with many offspring. Not all of the offspring that they produce are going to make it. And one other thing you'll see with our strategists, they don't invest a lot of resources in their offspring. They just put more energy towards reproducing because their lifespan is so uh, short. Another thing you'll notice too is that they tend to have a small size, okay? Now, one thing if we were to go back all the way to the human population growth graph, we'll notice that it seemed to have this exponential growth all the way until it leveled off right here, where we're expected to have a peak and then a decline. So we're not completely following the exponential growth model. Let's talk about another type of growth model, which is logistic growth. So in logistic growth, there are limited resources that tend to cap how many individuals that ecosystem can support. And this cap is known as the carrying capacity. So this is the maximum number of individuals that ecosystem has resources to support. Exponential growth, you're typically going to see when that cap 
cap hasn't applied and those organisms are growing as if they have like no limitations. In logistic growth, typically you're going to see that the birth rate is equal to the death rate. So you don't have a lot of population growth because the number of individuals added is the same as the individuals that are leaving. Some organisms and populations also rely on this and they're known as case strategists. So these organisms usually are going to have more energy needs so they tend to be higher level predators that require a lot of energy for their homeostasis. Um, they're also going to be larger organisms. They have also longer lifespans and they also have lower birth rates because they tend to invest more resources into the raising their offspring. So you'll notice, for example, that large cats like pumas might have two offspring a year and chimpanzees, which are our closest um, species relatives that are alive today, also have just one offspring every five years. So these organisms have higher energy needs. They invest more resources into their offspring uh, offspring, they also have ecological niches like predators where they may be required to learn to hone in like their, their skills so they have to invest more time and energy into their offspring so their offspring are more likely to succeed into adulthood. So we would follow um, in the steps of the K strategist though you could see that we had an exponential growth period in our population. So here are some takeaways that you should think about as you are writing notes and reading more about this topic. As the human population continues to increase, what other demands on resources will increase as well? And how are we going to be able to feed an increased demand from our population? What might happen if we exceed our planetary carrying capacity? So think about those questions. And I hope you learned a little bit about human population growth and also population growth in larger ecological terms. Take care.